Hey there, party people. It's Shaggy. I'm back. You missed me. You know it. But I'm keeping my promise. I said at the end of my last video, I would come back one day and take you through the farms that you'd build next, next steps, that sort of thing. So here I am. I would normally be making Minecraft videos with my son, but he's discovered this thing called Fortnite. I know he's young. He'll learn. But... While he overcomes this addiction, uh -huh, um, I'm cracking on on my own. It's taken too long to wait for him to come around, so we're going to work ourselves. And it's perfectly fine, you know? We're not in any rush. The whole point of the game is to have fun. So, as you can see from the world around here, nothing much has changed in my little humble starter base. The iron farm is still there. Still the best farm ever. The fishing farm is still there. Still pretty good. We got some cows where the villagers used to be, and we're ready to go. So, one day I'll come back and I'll tidy this up, but for now, I'm not going to worry about it. It's far enough away from the rest of my play space that really I only come back here to grab a few blocks of iron every now and again. So let's crack on. Let's head to the witch farm, and we'll go from there. Whoa, witchy woman, see how high she flies. Hey, except this isn't a witch farm, this is a slime farm. Uh, I built it in the swamp. Slime, swamp, seemed to make sense. I made the one chunk one with the mushrooms. It was okay for a bit. And then I needed more, or at least I got bored. And I got a beacon and I mined out the whole chunk. It's Silent Whisperer's design, so you've got the collection system either side, the iron golems either side. The slimes, they don't know which way to turn, but they all end up on the magma blocks. And as you can see, it produces a ton of stuff. I don't need that much slime. I used it for the frog light farm, but it's nice to know I got it to fall back on. Up top, it's witch time. This is the farm to build next, guys. It's super easy. All you need to do is find the witch hut and make a trident killer. That's it. Takes you about 20 minutes and it gives you a ton of loot. Check this out. You're gonna need the gunpowder because in your single player world, you need to fly with the rockets. This gives you the gunpowder, and it's better than a creeper farm. It is. In fact, a general mob farm in Bedrock is better than a creeper farm. So don't build one. Build this. 20 minutes, you're golden. There's a full tutorial if you go to JC Plays, and I recommend picking him up for that. Next, we're off to the raid farm! And here it is. This is the Cadillac of farms. This is the big boy farm that everybody really wants to build. Sad to say, it's a bit of a piece to build. As you can see, a lot of effort goes into this. You need to find the watchtower, the outpost. Then you need to mine it out completely, cover the whole place with leaves, grab a villager from somewhere, stick him up the top in a collection system. Yeah, it's a bit involved. Having said that, it shouldn't take you much more than an evening to do. And it is well worth it. Where you thought the witch farm gave you a ton of drops, this farm takes it to the next level. And it gives you all the useful drops that you're going to need next. Doesn't it, Mr. Iron Golem? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, not, 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 not. Yeah, maybe I'll let this guy out one day, but seeing as there's no way anything else can spawn around here at the moment, it seems, maybe he should stay in there for his own protection. Yeah. Let's see up the top. So here it goes. Forgive the noise, that's the trident killer. You can't get away from that. It's one of those things. But, we're in the middle of a raid at the moment, and it's night time. It always seems to be night time when I come here, for some strange reason. But watch it go. Here it goes. Squish, squish. There. And then you just rock up to the little window I've made, and you can heal your tools by pulling the XP out. See, this is a farm of two halves. And at the bottom here is where the banner villager guys, or well, illager guys rather, the pillager guys, they'll spawn here and give you the bad omen. You've got a trident killer at the bottom that wipes them out, gives you bad omen, and then up the top here, you've got one villager with a bed that signifies a village. And that then will allow the raid to spawn in this location, but the only place the raid can spawn is in your collection system. And that then flushes all these guys down into the Trident Killer, and you mullerize them. Hoorah! Do make sure when you build this farm that you use nothing but leaves and scaffolding as the top of everything. So everything should have on top of it a leaf or scaffolding. 
If you don't, raid mobs will spawn on whatever you've placed there instead. And that can be anything. That can be a chest, that can be an ender chest. If you're using this time to sort out your inventory, you could be surprised all of a sudden because as you put down your chests, mobs will spawn on them. And that could be a ravager and that could kill you. So don't do it. Make sure it's leaves and scaffold all the way. And just check out these drops. Flying back over spawn now. We're taking the long road home. <laughs> It's a few thousand blocks away, the raid farm, so we're coming back to it now and we're flying over a couple of spoilers for next time. But I'm taking you over past this village where I got my OG villagers from. And you can see the giant Jeb. Giant Jeb. And the grill house. Yeah, we'll come to that later. That's going to be a future episode, but I'm taking you to the next farm to build. So you built your witch farm. You built your raid farm. Now you build your guardian farm. And I've chosen to hide mine in a lighthouse because, as I said, I'm trying to cover up all my farms and check out this land. And this is textbook. Booyah. Love that stuff. Like magic. Right, before the sun goes down, let's see if we can turn this bad boy on. This is Silent Whisperer's design. The lighthouse, don't worry about that. I built that. It's okay. It's actually better than a lighthouse I read in a Minecraft book, so I'm chuffed with it. But here we go. It's a four bay, four pod trident killer so you essentially spawn proof a ocean monument and then you allow only four or five of the spawn locations to actually produce guardians and they're the ones that you put a trident killer next to and it just mullerizes them if you're using a looting three sword here as you can see just a steady flow of items and experience comes up that little chain and it repairs all your tools i think it goes from naught to level 30 in about a minute and if you want to get up to level 100, you can do that in about 5 minutes. You just stand there and wait, and the farm does the rest. As you can see, yet again, this bad boy produces. I was using it for sea lanterns, so... Uh, why are the hay bales there? Because they prevent fall damage. I don't have a bubble column back down, I just have a hole. So you drop down from the roof and you land on the hay bales, no fall damage. Here's a tip for you. Handy, huh? And here we go, surveying all my domain. There's only one final farm left to show you today. And it's over there in the obelisk. You can see it's kind of a bit kooky that I've got this strange cylinder pillar thing going on. Yeah, it's hiding a farm. It's hiding a mob dropper. Every world should have a mob dropper. Now I'm just remarking on the wonderful world as it will be. And I'm planning on putting a supermarket over there in this corner, eventually. So I'm going to set up loads and loads more farms so I can produce everything nice and easy. And then just rock up to a supermarket when I want to get some stuff. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, for every good landing, there's a less good landing, right, bud? Blah. Yeah, shake it off, shake it off. Come on, back to it, back to it. So... Every world needs a mob dropper because every world needs mob drops. Skeletons give you bones, which give you bone meal. You'd be surprised just how useful bone meal is. You've got zombies for rotten flesh. You trade them with the cleric villagers for emeralds. Again, that's super useful. And of course, number one, top of the shop, you got your gunpowder. The bows I've got here are for dispensers, and I use those for the bee farms. And a few other odds and ends as well. Dispenser's super useful. And the bows ain't always easy to come by. And you can hear that the farm's working. And this is the map of the world. I feel like Uncle Bulgaria. I keep updating it every now and again as it grows. Eventually this thing is going to be a mass of busyness. And I can't wait. Really looking forward to that. Let's spin around to the rest of this place. And then we're going to go and show you the last farm. Well, revisions to the last farm. Yeah, it's a cobble monstrosity on the inside. Please don't pay any heed, but that's rapidly filling up with mobs now. And all I need to do is just whack the killer on and that will do the trick. Got a wash basin with a bar of soap. Got a wardrobe with some storage. I like that. It's a cute little trick. We'll put a few little totems in there for safekeeping. And hidden behind here is a light block. Because the door is transparent, so the light shines through it. Along this lovely bridge here. 
this leads back to where the trading hall is now. That building in front of you is the tidied up version of the trading hall I had. And in the middle down there, there are the sniffers. I love these guys. I really do. I just think Mojang, do a little bit more with them, maybe. More seeds, perhaps. That would be awesome. And maybe make those torch flower things actually give off light. That would be cool, too. So, uh, before I uh, enter the last section of the video, quick reminder to you all that I will be coming back again with more videos on the rest of this stuff. So, do like, subscribe. There will be more. And I'm showing off now. Yeah, I went and got all the records. I will show you how as well in another video. I have that booked out as well. Um, I got all the armor trims as well. You'd think it was the silence trim that was the hardest to get, but actually I struggled to get the rib trim this time. It took me like eight bastions before I found that thing. I found the silence trim in my second ancient city, second chest. So yeah, a little potion brewing in here. I've got a little smelter set up over here. Uh, those are lava farms. So I just pop the lava bucket into the furnace and it gives me ready fuel. And the rest of this place is now my dweeb factory. Yeah, hey dweebs, still the same old dweebs from before. And my storage system, which is just a bunch of chests. There's nothing fancy, there's no intelligence behind it. Maybe I'll get around to it one day, but eh, not today. So I'm going to dump some stuff and we'll start winding this video down. So. Come back in future episodes, I'm going to take you through the rest of this. I'm going to take you through the actual village that I've made now. It's really important to get a bit of life into Minecraft entities, and putting a few villages around makes things just a bit busier and bustlier, makes it more complete. And I'll show you all that next time. But thanks for watching, team. This has been Shaggy. Have a good one. Do you see the beast? Have you got him in your sights? Yes, money, buddy. This should present no significant problems.